So for starters, I'm not Stephen Friedel, Friedy. This is not the 99 cent heart surgeon dilemma speech. I came off the bench as a last man at mediocre substitute. So this will be a, uh, geez, shut the hell up. This is a 20 minute presentation. I'm going to stretch into 50 and make even more boring than it normally is. I'll dive right into it. Where did that come from? I don't know what that's all about. All right, rule one. What movie is this from? Excellent. Good crowd. So rule one in Zombieland is cardio, which the reason I sound like shit today is that I've got a vicious cold to turn into something, some kind of plague because I smoked for 15 years and paying for it now. When the zombie apocalypse happens, I'll be one of the first ones to die, so you guys can stick near me. All right, how does this relate to what I'm talking about today, which is physical penetration testing and a little bit of social engineering? Um, rule one, cardio, has to do with the fact that you should really be trying to, to make me work to get into your premises. Um, this shouldn't be an easy task. I shouldn't be able to kind of wander right up, walk in your back door, sit in my car, um, do reconnaissance on your property. And the two examples I have up there are, I have to preface this a little bit. I, I gave this presentation work for a previous employer. I had to substitute a lot of the pictures uh, because of some legal stuff. But this is pretty much <laughs> pretty much copies of what I've done in the past. Um, the one on top is, is an example of a customer I had where it was an arm facility, it was a call center, but it was located in a in a recession hit mall. So they got some cheap property and took over an abandoned Sears or an abandoned Macy's or something. And they stuck a call center right where, in the one I worked in, and like wherever the pennies or Dillard or whoever it be, and a lot of this other stuff was abandoned. That's a bad idea. Um, one of the easiest ways that I found to get in that place was just by copying an employee badge. And the way I found that out, I, I actually didn't bother doing any internet searches or anything sexy or glamorous like that, I sat in the food court, which was right outside the front door of the call facility, and just watched all the people wandering in and out with all their different color badges. So you had the obvious grunts that worked in the call center doing the telemarketing and bugging you guys at dinner time about bills you didn't pay or credit cards they want to sell you. Then you had suits coming out that had different color badges. So that some were burgundy, some were blue. We figured out we wanted to go after the blue badges. So the next time the suits came walking around, we went up and bought a cup of coffee, and there buying a cup of coffee, and got a decent look, and actually got some photographs, copied the badges, went to Kinko's, print them off, came back in, walked in the front door. That's one reason you want to set up kind of a buffer zone, just like the old days of building. You know, the castle thing is overdone with security, but when it comes to physical defenses, it is pretty relevant. You want to have some kind of a buffer zone between a prospective attacker and your facility. Um, the second example, the one I have labeled bad is bad too. It looks kind of secure because it's got all the nice foliage and stuff and set back a little bit. It's actually kind of bad because, and this is something I've actually done, I, I also hunt and I have a ghillie suit that I use during archery season, but I also use it on um, physical pen test. So, and I know a couple other people do it too. Um, you can get incredibly close to some places that are considered extremely, extremely high, high security. Um, government installations, heavy duty defense contractors, places like that, you know, concertina wire, razor wire, arm guards, dogs, the whole nine yards. You can get right up on them. If they have foliage and things like that that come up onto their concrete, you can get pretty damn close and find out a lot of information that way. All right, smoking kills. I'm going to die about 20 years earlier than everybody else because I smoked for 15 years. Um, does anyone know what these blueprints are for? I mean, come on. Absolutely, a Death Star. So remember the beginning of the movie? Princess Leia's on a little ship and a capture, and they said, Where the hell, you know, where's the plans at? Where's the plans? Where? How do you think they actually got the plans from the evil empire? I had my theory. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. Little known fact, this is how they got them. It's a smoking area. So, <coughs> we've been talking about this for years. <coughs> no one's fixed it. The smoking area is still the number one point that I found for penetration in any kind of a, a concrete building. Um, 
up to and including any place you can probably walk around downtown here right now. Bank buildings, businesses, um, loading docks, any place you can find like that. Probably the building you work in. Even if you don't smoke, uh, it, and I know one person in particular that I talked about this technique a lot with years ago, he's a, a violent non-smoker. Um, even if you don't smoke it, it doesn't hurt to just kind of hang out there and talk to people. Um, because I smoked for years, I'm still in the habit of kind of hanging out with people that do smoke, or even here, you know, I'll, I'll wander out front and start talking to people. Uh, there's a couple things that it, it's really good for. One is in the reconnaissance phase, just trying to find out different information. If you hang out long enough, you find out all kinds of crazy stuff that you can document when you come back later, go in your car and start writing these things down. Find out about people that, um, you've got the people that have money troubles, that be co-opted financially, and that's documentable, and that you can write that up in a report. Um, they'll talk about problems with the system, potential outages, uh, who their bosses are. You can find out chain of command, org chart. You can do a lot of social engineering mapping just hanging out by the smoking area. So I shouldn't say you have to like outlaw smoking at, at your facility, but one thing you have to do is get it under control. Um, have some actual policies and procedures about it. I've been in places where they have smoking areas that are very secure. Uh, years ago, MBNA Bank up in Delaware had a whole separate they had almost like a tunnel that you walked out of, an air-conditioned, heated HVAC tunnel. Went out to like a nice little gazebo that was out there, and it was like an airport smoking thing, all filtered. That was great. I mean, it was impossible. I mean, the whole place was like one big glass bubble. It was very difficult to get in there, especially through this particular venue. Um, don't let smokers have kind of informal smoking areas like the loading docks, um, propping open side doors. And it's always near like a dumpster or something, which is a, another great target. Um, and even... Places don't do this, but have a special little security awareness seminar or a 15-minute thing for your smokers. Let them know that you know just because they go out the front door or they go in their designated area, or they go in an area that's not designated, doesn't mean it's open season to just to sit there and bullshit about everything that's going on inside the building. That's a really important one. Um, and the tailgating policies come in very heavily here too. All right, some fresh air. This is a big tip. Some fresh air would do you good, do you wonders. So this was a actual client. Um, the same client that had a facility in the mall. These guys were, their, their, their real estate section was wonderful. This one was located in what I can describe generously as a ghetto in um, a really bad part of Florida, pretty close to where, where I live. As you can see on here, <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I live in a town called Largo. The nickname is Larghetto. Um, if you look at this Google map, I mean, you can't figure it out by looking at this. But once I went there, actually I went there for the first time about 11 o'clock at night, kind of scope it out at night because it's usually a little bit slower then. Um, I had done some research and found out that most of their operations were relatively 9 to 5. The customer base was mostly U.S. based. <clears throat> so they were roughly 6 in the morning to about 8 o'clock at night. A lot lower level of activity at night. Um, the guards, as I found out, were pr practically non-existent, were particularly ineffective at night. I parked kind of up right above where the H would be, right? Park my car, I get out. The first thing I see, those are train tracks going this way. There's a street here, street here, street here, and a big parking lot. First thing I see when I get out of my car is some, some kind of like rustling around and some brush that's up there, right where the street goes under the railroad embankment. And I see this guy come walking out who's just a total crackhead, you know, flip-flops and just, just nasty, dirty. He's got about six months to live. He comes walking up, kind of hiking his pants up, wandering out. I'm thinking, Jesus, what the hell's going on here? And I'm th first time I'm thinking, I'm getting back in my goddamn car and getting out of here. Then I thought, okay, I've got, I got a carry permit in Florida. I'm carrying. There's only one of him. I may live the encounter out. I don't know. Well, next thing I see is his girlfriend slash, well, I guess he would be the client, would be the generous way to put it. Um, the business lady that he had been doing business with in the bushes, apparently, comes walking out. Now, she outweighed me by a good buck 50, 200 pounds. So now I'm thinking, I got a 38 with some wad cutters in my pocket. There's only five shots. I'm not quite sure I can take the wildebeest down. So at this point, you think, is your salary worth it? I'm not getting overtime. I got the crackhead over here. I've got Sasquatch over here. I'm kind of checking shit out. Well, come to find out that... What I have labeled homeless camps, I use this slide when I present it to a customer. It was more like open air brush whorehouse is over there by the H. Over here by that other arrow 
on the other side of the embankment, I found a little, uh, like a nest is the only way I can describe it, where there was a blanket, an old beat up sneaker, and like a really beat up teddy bear with a big hole in the middle of it. I have no clue what was going on there. And the first thing I thought of a when I saw that, I'm looking around thinking, Jesus, I don't have any gloves on or anything. I just kind of backed out that little nest. Well, the bad thing about that little nest is that this is the official smoking area, break room, picnic tables, all that shit for the whole call center. The little homeless camp was right about here. It, that is a lot closer than it looks. It's about 25, 30 feet away. So when I was in the little nest, this was actually the next day. I did that during daylight after my nighttime escapade. Um, I just sat there for about 20 minutes once I backed out a little homeless area and listened to all the conversations going on at this nice secure facility behind her chain link concertina wire and everything else where this homeless guy apparently has set up shop. Now, in addition to that, where I've got compromised fence line, um, over here was kind of a traditional, just shitty fence maintenance, you know? They had, the fence started about, I think it was about here, there was a gate, which I think I wrote open gate. There was actually three open gates. There's an open gate here, big slider gate you drive through. There's an open gate here. Right about here, there was a section of fence that's just in disrepair where in about, you know, one second you can just kind of roll under it and just walk in their property and there's no cameras or anything back in this corner. That piece up there is particularly disturbing because um, obviously it's being used by whoever these homeless transient criminal whores, whatever else is going on back there. Um, it was a section fence that was kind of rolled back on itself against the post and tied back and, there's, and it's sandy there and there's an obvious footpath there. So whoever rolled that thing back and they did it behind a dumpster, they were coming in and out of this property for whatever reason. I, I suspect they were probably just dumpster diving or God knows what, I don't know. Maybe they were, maybe they're hackers and they're going in there getting free internet. Well, crap back here. I don't know what they're doing. But it, it, it was kind of funny. I brought that one to the customer's attention immediately. You know, some things are critical, but some things are more critical than others. Um, I called them right away and I said, you know, this report's going to be a gem, but I got to tell you guys, you have a, you, you've obviously got some kind of criminal element that's cut your fence, rolled it back, and they're coming in and out of your property. There's, there's, it rained yesterday and there's footprints right here today. So last night, between me being here at 11 at night and 10 o'clock in the morning, somebody came in and out of this property. Um, so this is a mess, these guys. <coughs> Their main entrance is up here, nice and secure. They had a security guard, nice lady at reception. Um, I walked in dressed like this and said hi and tried to apply for a job, a bunch of crap. Down here they had an employee entrance that I really couldn't get a good look at. It had, uh, in Florida there's a lot of reflective film on doors, which sucks for the, my, my purposes. I really can't get a hint of what was on the other side. Um, but again, this is one of those cases where I was able to hang out in the parking lot, and I always carry one of these little spy devices, a little monocular. That's actually like a golf course rangefinder thing. Um, I hung out in my car for like an hour and just kept at a really good angle and kept waiting, waiting, waiting until I could get somebody to help the door open for a minute. And I found out there was a man trap inside that employee entrance. So they had that front door with the film on it. When you went in, there was a security desk with a security guard who was checking IDs, and then they had another door on the other side that was electronically operated. So I was thinking, this is going to suck. I'm going to have to try and figure out some way to blitz this door. Um, luckily for me, I knew about the compromised fence line, all this stuff. So I went around the back of the building thinking I'm going to crawl through the little homeless guy's path. Came to find out that um, I walked in a little bit. Gate was open. Kept walking. Gate was open. Walked in more. Third gate was open. So I finally came all the way around to that break room area and sat down there for about half an hour just hanging out, talking to people. Um, scoping out the back door, watching them walk in and out, watching their, their badging procedures. And um, I'll talk about that in a minute. I got in. I'll talk about what I did. Um, so here's the tips for this. this. They had armed security. They had um, anywhere between two and six people working in this facility at any given time. What they didn't do, they literally just stood at, either sat at their little man trap door or they sat at reception. Once in a while they'd walk back and forth in front there. Um, as near as I could tell, they never walked the perimeter, and there's no way they've been walking this perimeter. No one had walked this fence line in years. I mean, it was beat up, damaged, overgrowth. I know how fast stuff grows in Florida, but this hadn't been maintained a long time. If you are in a facility like this and you have security, it's going to do you a, a world of good if you actually go out and duplicate what they should be doing. You know, don't just think you hire Whack and Hut, and these guys are making seven fifty an hour or really give a shit about your property or, or your data or your people's safety or anything like that. 
Get out and make sure that they're actually doing their job. Um, you're paying money for it. So I say check it out yourself on foot, trust but verify. Walk outside the perimeter and the surrounding area. And I say go in the surrounding area because I know these guys didn't know that they've got homeless camps set up right there <laughs> within listening distance. They didn't know that this woman's got, what I found out later, she had a, um, a, la a big cushy Barca lounger lounge chair back in that brush. <sighs> I'm telling you, she was quite the entrepreneur. Um, they didn't know about that. And that's not their property, but it's right on their property. And they've got, you know, people walking in there 24 7, employees in and out. Not good stuff. If you see anything, call law enforcement. It's not your job to, like, take these people out. Um, again, it's not just data security sometimes, it, it can be a, a physical risk. <coughs> this one it goes back to what I was saying, where you raised in a barn. <coughs> like mom said to me, like, every day. Um, it's astonishing how many places you go to and the doors are open. They have locks and stuff and keypads and all that cool shit. They just don't close them half the time. Um, I think Kevin McNick was talking about yesterday where the one place they went in, they walked out. They stuck duct tape on there so they can come back in whenever they wanted to. I've actually been in facilities where they duct tape their own doors, which makes it really convenient for you. Um, that particular place, that customer, um, once I got around the back and I was hanging out in the smoking area and watching, just kind of staring at this back door and talking to people and trying to be cool, I, I realized, I'm, got, I'm getting old, my eyesight's not great, my hearing kind of sucks. I realized I wasn't hearing any kind of clicks or buzzes or beeps or whistles or hoots or hollers, nothing. Um, I, was, I was kind of focused on watching how long people are holding the door open and, and how I could tailgate and which person I'm talking to would be a good candidate to follow in the door. Not really paying attention to the door itself. Then all of a sudden I, I got a closer look at it. The damn thing wasn't even closing. It wasn't even, it wasn't even come close. It was almost jammed open. It was come about, have space about that big. So as soon as I saw that, I grabbed all my shit, picked it up, walked in the back door. Again, it was a film door. I didn't know if there was a man trap near the side of this one or not. I got lucky. I walked in right into like a snack area break room. Walked right in, got into the cubicles, and I spent 45 minutes in there owning the whole place. It was a disaster. Um, so the first thing to check, there's a TV show. I can't think of it. It's like the, not the greatest warrior, but something like that, where these guys compete against each other. And it's a strength competition, brains, and they break through walls with sledgehammers. And then the second row of doors, you have to pick the door or kick it open or whatever. Well, they always leave the door unlocked, and these guys never check it. They always start wailing away at this door with crowbars and sledgehammers and trying to climb over it and shit. Every once in a while, the smart guy will walk up and just try the knob. So my advice is, you know, if you're doing if you're doing a pen test, if you can get at the door without being observed, at least try the thing. Half the time, it's not even locked. All right. So tips: please shut the door upon entering or exiting. Make sure the doors are in good repair. I found out later the one um, that particular one I just opened it had been broken for something like 18 months. Um, it was on some kind of work queue somewhere. The maintenance guys just kind of got around to it. Um, in addition to other people being probably fired at that place, I'm pretty sure the maintenance guys were screwed. Make sure they close correctly. They're timed right. If you are using electronic locks, make sure that it's on. Um, and again, it goes back to like badging and policy and security awareness. Make sure that people are, every single person walking in and out is badging in and out. They're not holding the door for the next guy. Just politeness. Close the door. Badges. Badges are like my favorite thing in the world because they're so freaking bogus. Um, I've got some examples up here. Frodo Baggins, son of Drodo Ring Bearer. Um, that New York State Benefit card, the name is Hakeem Nelson. That's supposed to be a female. I swear to God, I think it's a guy. I mean, it, 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 they are what they are. You know, DV, I don't know what that license submission one is. Um, so one of the things I spent a lot of time on is the, the the guys yesterday talked about getting the backstory right. You know, doing a reconnaissance, getting your backstory right. One of the things I spent a lot of time with is kind of my supporting documentation, my supporting story. Um, and one of the, that's a picture of yours truly there. One of the personas I use a lot more than I used to in the past. I don't know why it's been, I think maybe I look older or more beat up or more blue collar than I used to, um, is the cable guy routine. Just going in. Uh, pretending you're a cable guy, kind of look, and having a bunch of different cover stories. So let me do a the next slide. This thing, this whole presentation is more for like um, end users and security awareness for C levels and people like that. So I'm talking a little bit more about the craft of it today with you guys. I'm gonna strip down. 
So this was, I didn't tell you, this is like the uh, job applicant persona thing, right? You go in the front door, it doesn't work, or it does work, and half the time people don't, they're not checking on what you look like, they really don't give a crap. Fake badge, let me go, well, fake electronic access badge in there. I've got an RSA fob that I found out, I got about two years ago from a company I was doing some work with. This still works. It's frightening. And this is about it. You carry one of these around, you make lots of beepy noises once in a while. I swear to God, it's legit. It's astonishing. And everybody knows about the hacker clipboard, right? I mean, if you're walking on the clipboard, the keys of the kingdom, right? Beautiful. What I like, this is like some kind of HSN showpiece here. What I like about this one is it's got a little door there. So here's a couple things I carry. I'll get to some of this stuff later, but this sounds kind of crazy, but I take this in. Uh, if they're interested in knowing about uh, if any of their security, like their safety security procedures are working, I always carry in like a knife or something. I'll tell them I have a carry permit. Freak out. Um, fake business cards. Depends on who I'm talking to or what I'm talking about. I've got a whole collection of them. USBs. A lot of USBs. Um, this thing's nice because you can actually put a lot of shit in here if you seal stuff, put paperwork in here, all kinds of stuff. And when you're walking around the facility, you can be kind of have it open. You'll literally start dealing these out like crazy. Um, the funniest one I have is in, I'll talk about call center later, but the funniest one I have is walking down the aisle. scepter of death. It's like the, the Grim Reaper tool of unemployment for bad people. This thing here will get you any piece of scrap junk you can get with it for like 25 bucks. If you walk around Sad. I'm really not. The the one that one place I did was like that one place was like like two weeks before Christmas, and I came home and was telling my wife all this cool shit I did and how I violated them. It was horrible. And her first thought, she's like, "Are people gonna get fired?" I said, well, "Probably." But I said, "There," and I told her who the client base was that this call center is working with, and she said, "Well, we have two of those credit cards." I said, "Yeah, I know." I said, "These dipshits are in charge of like you know your data, my data, our kids' data." I said, it's, it, you know, tough shit. If people are going to be that criminally negligent, then life's tough. I'm sorry, I'm getting old and grumpy. So uh, I didn't talk a whole lot about the badges. It's so funny, though. I mean, I that particular one I had, I'm trying to think what I got on. So I had a Comcast shirt, right? I had the, at the time I had a another, like a third-party company I made up that was supposed to be like an infrastructure company. Um, and then I had something else. I think my business card was another third piece of ID. And I'd actually pointed all three of these out to the people at the front desk and like the security administrator guy that came up to escort me in. And for some reason it didn't connect with them that I've got like all this conflicting identification on me. I was, I was, it was before Christmas. I think I was unconsciously being generous, giving this guy every chance to say, what the fuck, dude, what are you doing in here? Nobody got it. Um, and it's pretty crazy. So, oh, I had one more prop. So the Comcast shirt. You guys have heard how many people do how many people do like physical pen testing? How many people go to thrift shops when they go to towns like Louisville? Okay, so I'm staying at the Residence Inn, which is like eight blocks away. It really sucks. Um, the cool thing is, if you stay at the Residence Inn, you pass the St. Vincent de Paul shop, 
So at about 819, I'm sorry, about 919 this morning, for three dollars I bought this cute little polo shirt. I had, trust me, I had my pick of all different stuff I could have got. This one intrigued me because um, I can't really tell you why. It's nothing about the customer, but it's Owens Corning Louis Owens Corning Louisville plant. I mean, it's pretty innocuous, you know, it's a polo shirt, but it's kind of cool to have. So if you're in town and you're hacking Owens Corning, you know, maybe this would be useful. If I go in with this and, you know, hard hat Charlie with my fucking measuring wheel and say I'm from Central Command at Owens Corning and I'm doing some kind of site survey, they'll let me in anywhere. They will. They absolutely will. Um, the cover story I used that was pretty effective, and it's been pretty effective at a couple of these places, is that it depends on the sophistication of the environment, but um, this Comcast One hard hat measuring wheel thing was that um, I'd been, I'm a subcontractor for Comcast. We're a, a provisioning company. We put in satellite dishes. We dig, you know, infrastructure. We, put, we hang stuff off big antenna poles on stuff. Just make up a whole bunch of horse shit to people at the front desk. They have no clue what I'm doing. Um, so the whole satellite thing meant that I had to get in this facility and measure a spot where we're going to punch a cable through the ceiling. And then once we drop the cable in, it's got to come into their DMARC that's going to be in probably near their server room. So I'm going to need to look at your server room. I'm going to have to look at wherever the DMARC comes in, blah, 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 blah. At this one place, the, guy, the, the computer administrator for the site had no idea what a DMARC was. So I knew at that point, I was like, oh. So I had to actually teach the guy about, you know, like wide area networking and infrastructure in order just to hack into his place. It was kind of funny. Um, so once I got into the server room, it was, it was on. Um, oh, I did one more thing. So all this paperwork and shit that I've got with me, this thing here for my little satellite install company, um, I actually went and made a little project plan up and made it look all messy and circled shit. And I've got the different sites on here and I'm doing it, dates highlighted. I made it look like we're behind in our implementation. Um, and I had a custom one for, I, it was three different sites I had to hit. So for each one, I highlighted their site and all that kind of stuff. So I had that there. Kind of generic rack drawing. I said I had to get in and see what kind of space you had in your server room. I got to check this is the kind of rack we're installing. I got to measure. I got to photograph. I got blah, 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 blah. I had a whole nice chain of fake emails I made up um, that actually led back to authentic, not quite C level, but director level people at the company that hired us to do the pen testing. Um, so it was sort of a trail of verification if they bothered to try and verify. For the most part, they really did. It's it's pretty it's pretty sad. I've only had to kind of use stuff like that once or twice. Um, in fact, probably twice in the past year. And the one time I had to use it, they did go back and kept checking, checking, checking. Called. They looked at an internal system. They called the people up, and they actually finally caught me. But they caught me after I'd already been in the facility for like 45 minutes. And then I just walked out the door. They didn't really do anything. <coughs> uh, interesting thing about badges. <coughs> Who's a fan of PCI compliance? So. There's a funny little rule in PCI. They tell you that you have to give visitor badges to all your visitors. Who thinks that's a good idea? Come on, it is. It's a good idea. You should give visitors visitor badges, right? It doesn't actually say that you should have badges for your employees, though. So I went to a place doing a PCI compliance test. We were also doing a physical pen test. And they gave me my little visitor sticky badge when I walked in. It was really cool and all. And they said, OK, just go down here to the elevators, down to the left. I walked down the elevators. I took my visitor badge off. And all of a sudden, I'm an employee. <laughs> so if you just have a visitor badge policy, by taking the visitor badge off, ipso facto, you look like everybody else that's working there. Um, it's actually a pretty bizarre little omission they have in there. Uh, so I would suggest, highly suggest, that if you have a visitor badge policy, you should probably have an employee badge policy, too. Um, escorts. I had, some, I had some really killer slides here, but I couldn't use them. It sucks. I have pictures. Um, so I decided to talk about it instead a little bit. And it, the, the one on the right, as you can guess, the, the case study I'm doing, um, everything about their environment's fucked up. And this is an environment that they get tested this way every year. Two years, three years before I did it, um, Jericho did it. The year before I did it, Pyro did it. And these guys are like top of the food chain, right? And this company keeps implementing fixes and keeps doing more and more stuff. I come around year three, I do it, and it's still a total cluster. Um, their, their server room looked a lot like the one on the right, just so you know. So actually, this is kind of a funny slide. Um, 
Which one do you think is, in a physical penetration testing world, which one do you think is easier to exploit? It's actually not. Um, my big goal, all, you can't, there's, unless you're doing denial of service and just unplugging shit, about the most you can do in a server room, unless you, you really can get on the keyboards and do stuff, um, is stick media in these things. Because you got, you, you're not going to be in there for six hours. <laughs> you, you really, if you have the best cover story in the world, or sometimes I'll leave you alone, but it's kind of rare. Um, if they let you in there, they're going to wonder why you're staying there that long if you're doing a site survey or you have some kind of cover story like that. So usually I, my goal getting in there is to document I was in the place and get USB drives in as quick as I can and try and get a interpreter session set up and open tunnels up off as much gear as I can. Um, in this environment, I swear to God, the one place I went in looked a lot like that. And my biggest difficulty was I couldn't find the servers. They were just, the whole back of the thing was just spaghetti. And I was spending, a, I always carry a flashlight anyway, but I actually was using my flashlight and pulling, like pushing wires up with my elbow like that and looking in there and trying to figure out where I can stick a freaking USB. Um, the guy who was standing in the room with me was actually not a computer guy. So he was like maintenance guy, like you know, sweeping the floors facility guy. <clears throat> My thing about escorts is, if you're gonna use escorts for visitors or coming in the building, give an escort that's kind of pertinent to the type of visitor. If it's a sales guy, then let a sales guy walk around, who gives a shit? If it's some dipshit like me that walks in with measuring wheels and construction hats and says he has to do something in your computer room, well, send like a facilities guy who knows something about the ceilings and everything else, or s and send a computer guy with them. Don't just let the guy wander in there and, you know, hack away at stuff. Um, I actually backed out of it because we had a, a very strict denial of service thing. Um, we weren't allowed to do any Dawson. Um, so I backed out of there because I was actually afraid I was going to start taking equipment out just trying to find shit. So I managed to get one USB and one server in there almost by, I kind of did it blindly, just sort of stuck it in there hoping it was what it looked like. Um, and did get one in one server. But I, I knew for a fact they had about 60 some servers in these racks, but it was almost impossible to, to get a clear shot at them. All right, so all visitors get an escort, period. That's it. It might be inconvenient, but it might save your job. In medical in particular, I don't know what it is, but in, me um, in medical pen t physical pen testing, for some reason, I, I think, I guess they're just overworked or they're overburdened or I don't know what, but anytime I go in a healthcare hospital setting, um, not like health insurance, but real healthcare setting. Um, I get almost unfettered access every single time. Uh, the the worst example I can think of was very recent was I, I did a kind of a, a chain of uh, physical therapy places. And it was a big chain. It was like 20 some shops. Um, and about half of them, I walked in and they just pointed down the hall. And the funny thing is that it wasn't a big cover story. I came in, I said, I'm doing a security audit for your company. I need to see your server room. So you don't always have to lie. You don't always have to be crafty. You just tell them what you're doing. It doesn't work with there. You have to know who you're dealing with. But I knew that healthcare, they're kind of dopey. Um, as long as you're not a salesman, like a pharmaceutical salesman, you, can you can't get past the front desk of your farm sales. But if you come in and say you're doing security, I'll have to let you do whatever the hell you want. In multiple instances in the same chain of companies recently, they actually handed me the keys and said, oh, well, here, just give me that. So, the really, and I'm not a key guy, really, but I kept thinking, I wish I had one of these little key imprint kits so I could like prove and at least put in my thing. Um, so I went and got some silly putty for the next, between sh places, I went and got some silly putty and just did a key imprint and put the imprint into the deliverable dock just to show I got keys, which is astonishing. Um, visitors encounter without an escort should be taken back to the entrance. <coughs> that has to do with that one company where they kept, Checking, they finally caught me wandering around, asking what the hell I'm doing, which is great. This woman was like a pit bull. And you know, you could feel somebody looking at you. I mean, this big call center, it's like this big place, just like, well, it's an old department store. It's a big, vast floor. And I'm like at this corner, and I'm doing my little wheelie thing, and I'm looking at cubicles. I'm sitting down once in a while, and I'm stealing shit, and I'm putting USBs and CDs and popping back up again, looking around, trying to find, just do as much damage as I can. About the third hop up and down I do, I, st I just felt something looking at me. I look over and there's this little tiny elderly lady that's like way to hit, like Madge from Monsters, Inc. Like on the way on the other side of the thing. And I knew she was, I just knew she was going to get me. And then I thought, I had to, I went to Catholic school and the Catholic guilt comes out. And I thought, all of a sudden all the guilt, I'm like, oh my God, I shouldn't be here. And I know I could, I was giving that vibe off. I was trying not to. She made a beeline for me. Came up, who are you? What are you doing here? How'd you get in? Blah, blah, blah. I said, I'm doing this site survey. I got to put a satellite dish on the roof. I'm just, 
I said, I knocked on the IT guy's door. No one had answered. Somebody else told me just to wait here, and I'll come over. But I got to get things done. I said, you know, I, I'm not trying to be a hard ass, but I got to get out of here. Well, you wait right here. And, da -da -da -da. and then she went on. She came back again. I gave her my little fake shit and my emails. I said, well, this guy hired us to come in here. I don't know. She goes, well, wait a minute. She picked the phone up, and she called the guy directly um, and did not get an answer because he's on vacation. Coincidentally, it's kind of weird. But um, so then she's getting really suspicious. And she said, well, you, you just wait right here. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> and just yeah. zoomed out the back door. Um, so she did like 90, and I actually wrote her up in a report. She did 90% of it right. But they actually didn't have a policy in place like, what do you do if you encounter somebody in your building? They had all they, they had all policies that they're not observing anyway, but they didn't really have one that said, you know, walk the people up to the front desk, have them take a seat, you know, in that little man trappy area where we can keep an eye on them and then verify their story. And if it's clean, give them a visitor badge. And I'm like, none of that. I just. I just walked right out the front door or back door. Um, part of the reason this works, and it comes into what this little lady was all about, is that ignorance is bliss in a lot of these environments. Um, these are especially call centers. Call centers, even in healthcare, um, healthcare they're not always low paid, but they probably feel like they're low paid because they're a lot like us. You know, they work like a billion hours. You know, if you make a hundred grand but you work 75, 80 hours a week, what do you really make, right? Um, so in these environments, they're kind of low paid for the most part. They really don't give a shit about their jobs. The turnover is massive. Um, and they have no kind of investment in data security or, or people's rights or property or privacy rights or anything. They get training and stuff all the time. They just don't listen. The biggest thing they do wrong, though, is they just ignore shit. I mean, this is the environments I work in most of the time. So I could sit right here. And I've done it. I can sit in these places and listen to like their little, they have these little, especially in call centers, they have these little meetings all day long, like like sales boosting meetings and pep rallies and shit like that. And I love when I'm doing these things. And I'm again, I'm dressed like this, hard hat and the measuring wheel of death and everything, right? And I'm sitting down in the cubicle, like a little team, just listening to the whole pep rally. You know, like, we're selling Amex today. Or get out there. We have to have 45,000 calls today. You know, and they're going on and on, doing this cheerleading. And I'm sitting there taking notes about, who the clients are, what the numbers are. I'm like, Jesus, I can't believe people talk about this crap, and I'm sitting right here. Um, the other thing, uh, again, I know there's turnover, but you know, you go in it, this one's actually really clean, but you go in some of these environments, and it's interesting, because you can tell who's been around a while. They get the family pictures up, they decorate their cubes, they're longer term employees. And even there, you sit down in one of these cubes, and I start stealing shit, or rifling through things, or typing on computers, and the woman that I know sits right next to them, must work with these people 40 hours a week for the past three years, doesn't do anything. Just sits there looking at it. And they're not high cubes. They're sitting, I'm just kind of like, hey, how's it going? Typing away, doing all kinds of crap. And they, they never do anything. It's astonishing how much you can get away with. Um, there are ways to combat it. And I've, I've helped companies do this in the past. Part of it is they just don't give a shit. Part of it is there's that avert. That, I forget what that show was that outsourced or something was on last year. And there's this sweet girl on the show who just couldn't even, like, like, live in her own skin. She was just so scared of everything. And every time I saw that show, I thought, Jesus, she's like half the people I meet in these call centers. They just are so scared to like look at you or talk to you or ask you what you're doing there. Um, so I do the secret skulker contest, where basically it's people like me and you go in there and walk in and do all this crap. But these people get spiffed for catching people. You know, If they see somebody without a badge, they grab you. Um, they do all the procedure. They hold you and do all this stuff. And you actually, the one thing, I, the one company I try to do this at, we gave them a really good program to do this. And they offer like a really shitty pro. I mean, they get, this is, actually this is from my company, CBI, plug, little aliens. Um, but they gave the people something like this. I'm like, you know, you gotta give them like, give them like a hundred dollar night on the town. Give them an American Express gift certificate to do whatever the hell they want to do. Something that actually means something. Somebody makes like 10 bucks an hour. Um, so even the people, like I said, even the wallflowers start to get, even the people that are kind of averse to conflict, they may really want to take their kid to Disney that weekend, so they may really be <laughs> catching some goofball walking around trying to steal shit. Um, the eighth lesson, nothing in life is free. So I showed you my little aluminum box of hell. Um, I don't know if you noticed in that box I had that sand disc. That, that's not a mistake. I actually open a package, load the disc, because people are kind of averse to putting shit in their computers now, right? Like I, they were talk, Kevin and um, they were talking yesterday about a lot of this stuff's kind of getting old hat. You walk in parking lots, you chuck stuff around. You know, I do all the usual. I put, you know, Jenna Jameson, porn, Katy Perry, Call of Duty, family vacation. Everybody knows that. You know, everybody knows the number one thing when you do this is the family vacation are the ones that get hit the most, right? It's kind of freaky that people look at 
somebody else's family photos before they look at like Jenna Jameson. Um, so the one thing I've been doing, particularly in the past six months, is actually loading the original packaging back up with a malware loaded USB. Because people are kind of hip to the whole free USB thing, just laying around and not sticking in their drives. So this, you know, even the security guys or the really smart people that work there, the IT people, they'll pick one of these up and rip it open and think they have a blank USB. You know, what's that? About 20 bucks at Staples. That's nice. They got a free one. Somebody dropped it out of their bag. Tough shit. I just got something free. Um, unfortunately, it's got nice mature per session. It's going to launch when they stick it in their computer. Owned. <clears throat> so, the tips for this are practice safe computing. Teach your personnel not to put anything in their system they just find, not even the freaking disk that's rolling down the cubicle aisle, which to this day, I still can't believe a woman did that. Um, make sure that your techier people, you know, it, it, I try to get companies to have like a turn in program. If people find media just laying around, you don't have to throw it out. Maybe it is valuable to somebody in the company. Maybe it is somebody's family photos. You know, have a procedure to give it to the IT people. The IT people have some kind of an isolated sandbox um, off the web where they can actually open these things up and take a look at it and see if it has any value. See if it is like Larry's family freaking photos from Disneyland last year. <coughs> has anybody ever seen this picture? This was a, I saw it years ago and then I Googled to try and find it. There's an article in CSO Magazine on clean desk policy. This photo has at least 20 things wrong with it. Uh, most of them you can see, and you can tell one of them. I got the list of 20 here. One of them, it, it, the fact that number nine is PDA seems kind of dated because it's like I don't even think people have PDAs anymore. Maybe maybe pads kind of qualify, but um, smartphones have kind of taken that one over. So there's a shit ton of stuff wrong in this photo, and um, everything from the day planner to what looks like it could be either some kind of workflow or network diagram, um, a drive mapping that shows merger targets. All kinds of proprietary stuff. All this stuff is open. The cool thing I like, it, I think, is briefcase one of the ones? Oh, my Evernote's synchronizing. That's convenient. Number six is briefcase. Um, personally, what I would do with the whole briefcase thing is I would use that briefcase to steal all the shit they got laying around over there. Because that's nice. Maybe not the binders. It's heavy, and I got a bad back. And roll ducks are, roll ducks has got to be 10 years out of date. Who the hell's using those? Okay, so. Create and enforce a clean desk policy. I'm amazed at how many places don't have a clean desk policy of any type. Um, if you look back, where's the other one? That's a clean desk policy right there. It's actually pretty cool. And I do see this. Um, even that place that was really screwed up, they had a, a, one of their facilities was astonishingly clean in that regard. Um, one of them was really bad. But the, the, one that, the one that had the wide open door, for some reason, they had really clean desk going on. Um, so I actually wrote them up as being good that way. That was about the only thing they did. Um, get all the files and notes. Personal photos were fine. Get everything else off. Have locks. Use the keys. Don't leave the keys in the right in the drawer. That's just fascinating. People do that. Um, I didn't talk about dumpster diving, but it's a it's part of every single physical pen test we do. Um, which is the main reason you use a shredder. If you use a shredder, I would suggest using disposal service as well. Somebody that takes all this stuff away for you. Secure the outside trash area. Um, to this day, companies don't do that enough. They're still remarkably easy to get into. Um, the last one we did, we, there were two of us in the car. We drove up. I was in the passenger seat. I jumped out. All the smokers were standing there hanging out. This is like 10 o'clock at night. All the smokers are hanging out. I jumped out, went over to the trash can, just started pulling bags of trash out, threw them in the back of the car, got in, closed the door, and everybody's like, yes, <laughs> right, God, they didn't even, they didn't even like, raise an eyebrow. And I thought, if I stand here smoking, two guys zoom up in a car, a guy jumps out, dives in the dumpster, pulls two bags out, throws them in the car. I just finished my cigarette. Fuck them. Um, this one's called No Good Deed. It goes unpunished. So the same, that same place where the guy, at, at the very beginning, I'm showing him all my different kinds of ID, and I'm trying to show him. I, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get the guy to catch me. He will not freaking catch me. He's the nicest guy in the world. He's got, he got fired at Christmas. It just blows. But... Um, so nicest guy in the world, on my way out the door, I thought, well, the only thing I really haven't done, I haven't got administrator access to anything yet. You know, I didn't have time to sit down and really run any tool. There, the place is so wide open and physically so open that I spent a lot of time with my little measuring wheel going around. I must have made six laps around this place with the measuring wheel 
looking around like trying to find cool stuff. Um, so on my way out the door, I actually had, I was getting text messages and emails from my partner that's out in the car who's laughing his ass off because he sees all these tunnels opening up from shit that I'm dropping. I'm, I'm dropping stuff in the building and tunnels are opening before I, I'm in there for like 38 minutes. People are, are loading this stuff as I'm still there. It was astonishing. So I'm like trying to read this stuff. I didn't have my glasses. So I asked friendly administrator guy, computer administrator dude, if there's a computer I could use to check my webmail because my boss is trying to send me this really important email I can't read and he's going to kick my ass and he's such a dick and blah, 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 blah. He goes, oh, yeah, 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 come over here. You can use my desk. But I'm logged in as me. So when you're done, can you just let me know because I'm about to leave and I got to log out because I'm the administrator. I'm like, cool, thanks, man. I mean, you, every once in a while things happen, you go, holy shit. It's almost like you get you get inundated with what the hell are you going to do now because you get so many freaking options available. It's awesome. <laughs> So I'm, I'm going in my pockets, and I had nothing left. I had, no, I had no CDs. I had no USB. The only USB I had left was one with um, Switchblade and Hacksaw on it that I just chucked on. It was, an old, it, was really, it was like two years old. It was like this one I always carry around. I, have, I, I didn't tell you guys, but I keep them kind of color-coded so I know what the hell I'm doing because I carry like half a dozen of them when I go in a place. Um, and this one, I think it was orange, I forget. But uh, that's the only one I had left. Well, it's one of these short cube environments. So Mr. Helper is sitting kind of in his buddy's desk across from me. And I'm at his desk, which is kind of like this. And they're really low. They're about this low. And I'm looking across at him. I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, I don't know what it is. So he had his computer under the desk. And uh, I kept, I had my little wheelie of death leaning against the desk. So I tipped it over. I'm like, oh, shit. I bent over and popped it right in there. Sit back up again. I'm looking. And then all hell breaks loose because they actually had, um, I forget it was McAfee or they had SEP on there. Well, the, the screen starts going ape shit because it picked up Switchblade. And it's trying to all these things are running, all this shit's gets scrolling by, and I'm like, and it's just flat. It's flashing like that goddamn fruity Odie bar commercial at the beginning, and I'm sitting, I'm thinking, is this like flashing off, like reflecting off my face? Can he actually see what the hell's happening to his computer right now? And I'm trying to play it cool. And I'm like, doo -doo -doo -doo, you know. Um, so the whole thing loaded. I kept shutting Windows down as fast as I could without him really noticing. I'm clicking like a madman. Um, and now I'm starting. To, I'm, I'm surfing through his computer. I'm taking all different screenshots of, you know, proving I'm logged in as administrator, opening files. I'm stealing shit. I'm using Yahoo Mail to attach. I'm saving it as drafts in Yahoo Mail to prove that I can take files off. So it was, it was a disaster. The guy was just, it was a horror show. The poor guy. Um, so that leads to, don't. It's so freaking common sense. It's astonishing what happens. Don't ever let strangers use your computer. Strangers are bad. Stranger danger. Don't let anyone use your computer. Um, you know, I don't let, uh, this is, a, you know, preach to the choir. I bet people in here don't really let their coworkers use their computer a whole lot. I don't. I don't let my kids use it. That's because they're smarter than me. And what I tell people, this isn't really for you guys, but it's more for when I do these things at a client site. Um, memorize and practice this phrase. I'm sorry, but I can't let anyone use my system. Please call 1-800 you know, ask Gary, and I'll be glad to help you. Um, I've had people giving classes and training rooms let me use a computer. I had that computer administrator guy use a computer. I've had front desk people. I've, I've had people at every strata of a company over the years let me sit down and use a computer. This guy was the worst. It was just, it was sad. Because the whole time we're walking around, he's telling me he just got a security plus cert, and he's smart he is, and he's just like, God, you're so, you're so hosed. All right. Who knows who this guy is? We got some older people here, right? Who is that? Les Hessman. Les Hessman's like my hero. He's just so dorky. Oh, God. Check it out. Complete mouse failure. Oh. I had a Les Hessman video to show you guys, but it's not going to let me do it. <laughs> How about CD? I got Jenna film. You want to watch it? <laughs> Damn, I can't do it. That will conclude, this is amazing, 20 minutes, I went right on 50. That pretty much concludes um, questions at this point. I still got a little voice left. Questions, questions, anyone? Yeah, piece, the, piece back together. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they blow. I usually, I haven't actually had to pick it yet. Um, most of the places I've gone where they shred, the stuff's either just sitting there or they chucked it out in plastic bags in the dumpster. 
And if they're not doing cross cut, you can piece the, I mean, you know, you cr piece together pretty easily. You've got a lot of good data off of it. The what? Oh, yeah, yeah. You could. I think you could. I've done worse things in places. I actually just used the. I wonder if I had that slide. Oh, shit, I have to. Not a mouse, I only have a thing. I use set. I don't have. I'll be using the new version of set. The. Um, What's it called? The malicious, how's the phrase? Malicious software. It's like option five or six on set. Um, and all, the only one time I could think of, we were actually injecting stuff back in to prove we could bring something back. All we're doing on most of these is just opening a tunnel up as a proof of concept. Um, the one in particular was a point of sale system for a big fast food company. So we opened the tunnel up, and then we put a card swiping program back on it to show that we could actually capture credit cards as they were pulled off the drive through But that was, that was the only time we actually put anything into a system. Auto run. Yeah. Um, the point of sale one, they had auto run shut off, but we figured out a way to break into that, too. They had administrator, the, pro, the point of sale application needed administrator rights. So you get it when she got into the operating the Windows operating system underneath. We opened up the on-screen keyboard, and he got a command shell and just, which I could probably use right now instead of my mouse. But um, once we got the on-screen keyboard working, then we just started re-enabling everything in control panel. <laughs> so we turned the USBs back on and went to town. Yeah, once um, South Carolina. And, oh, I didn't talk about that. I always carry, I mean, everybody does carry that get out jail free card letter, right? <laughs> I always carry one of them. Um, but the time I got caught, it, they detained me for about half an hour, which they should have, you know. And luckily, everything checked out. And luckily, my customer was at the other end of the phone waiting like they said they would be. Thank God. <laughs> Is that it? Time? Thank you. Give me questions. Come on up. <laughs>